Hello and welcome to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract and in this Explorer we're going to take a look at the latest version of JavaScript at the moment, uh, JavaScript 6. And uh, let's go into some code then, shall we? Ooh. So we're not going to be exploring quite as visually as we have explored in the past. But uh, nonetheless, it should be of interest, hopefully. One thing that the new version of JavaScript has is these things called modules. And we've been using a module pattern for some time with Zim. That's how Zim is loaded in. It used to be divided in a bunch of modules, but then we introduced Zim Distill so that we could distill out from all of our code only the code that we're using. So we stopped using modules and went towards distill, which I found out later is also called tree shaking. Isn't that cute? Tree shaking. Wah, 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 wah. Now there's a new way to do a module. Here's how we were doing it in the past and, and still do it. We would bring in create.js and we would bring in Zim, but sometimes it matters which one comes first. For instance, in this case, we have to load Zim after create.js because it makes use of create.js. So in the modern JavaScript world of all these libraries, that became sometimes confusing to know which one to load when. For Zim, for the most part, uh, anyway, for me, I've been coding really only with Zim and CreateJS. So there might be some cases where you use Zim in an HTML page amongst a bunch of other libraries. Uh, but for the most case, this is pretty simple. <laughs> uh, the module is, is kind of simple, but it doesn't quite do what I want. So that's a shame. And not only that, at the moment, it's not working quite yet on all browsers. In Firefox, you have to turn on the DOM module scripts enabled. So let's go through some of that. First of all, the idea is you can load in code from other places and load in only what you want to, to use. I think, it, though, it still has to download the whole, the whole package or the whole thing to to the, the user, so it's not helping in that regard. Um, but you can say, hey, import everything in the module and then use this as a namespace, uh, as app or as zim. So this could say import star everything in the module as zim from, and this is the path. So you don't need to put the dot JS on the end and paths have to start with a dot or a slash in there. So a dot or a slash or HTTP, an absolute URL. So even though ES6 module is in the same folder, uh, for some reason they decided that we're not allowed to do that. So dot slash is another way of saying this folder. Okay, so we have a module. Here it is. Uh, we'll look at that in just a second. So we could import everything from that module, all the code that we need, like we do uh, when we import Zim or CreateJS, that imports it all. But in this case, we have it set up so that we don't need a namespace. And I like that now. And now, if you're using other libraries, namespaces are handy. And you can quite easily turn Zim on so that you use the namespace. But this module approach, force if we want to bring in everything, it forces you to use a namespace uh, right here. Uh, which is too bad. Um, then we've got an import. Uh, an alternative would be to import a specific item that has been exported from the modules. And in this case, if you import a specific thing, you don't have to use the namespace. But Sim's got so many things, we're not going to want to sit here and import the 30 things that we're going to use. That's just, you know, annoying. So I can't really see this format being of much use, unfortunately, and that's too bad. So in the one case where we've imported everything from the module, we're then using the namespace and asking for a timestamp. In the one case where we've imported a specific item, we don't need the namespace. We could use the namespace because we also have that available from, from this. All right, here's what the module looks like. On the module side, we would say export something. 
And here we're exporting a function called timestamp. And here we're exporting a function called author stamp. So on the Zim side, we'd have to take our 100, 100 various codes that we have there and stick an export in front of all of them. It's not the end of the world. I mean, it can be done for sure. But like I said, I don't know what it's giving us. And not only that, it's not working on all browsers yet. So it's sort of like, yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, this is supposed to be a nice explore. Uh, that was just a little bit of a kerfuffle there at the beginning. Most of the rest of the stuff is pretty nice. Let's take a look and, and see what this looks like in a, a browser. Uh, great. Oh, another thing is you have to look at, for this module to work, you've got to look at it on a server. So it's sort of like, yeah, I want to develop. I don't want to always be looking on the server. That's just me. You know, you guys, fine. If, if you're always on your server, that's okay. But I'm not always on my server. I don't want to have to upload it to the server every time I make a save and test this thing. So I do a lot of building not on the server, just locally. And the module won't work there. However, it did work here on the server saying author Dan Zen. And there's the timestamp. Timestamp first and then author Dan Zen. Uh, now, how you would turn your modules on in Firefox here, you would go about config, colon config, like so, and accept the risk of voiding the warranty and type in the word module, like that, and it's this DOM module scripts enabled. Sorry, I can't, that won't go bigger. You double click on it. Now it's not enabled. If it's not enabled, we refresh here. We don't see anything the module doesn't work so zim wouldn't work and if we do click it on to true and we refresh here there's our stuff again okay so that's enough about modules i think um, we are still our ours are not ready for that kind of importing so we're still loading them in in our traditional way now in es6 uh, one of the things I, I suppose a major thing is that variable var has been divided up into a couple other ones it keeps var as well but in general you're supposed to use these other ones now whenever you can and use only var in an emergency or sort of uh, as a last resort uh, there's maybe one or two times where you would still use var but the idea is is if we can specify how we're approaching these variables or what we want them to do or what we're expecting then we can maybe get a little bit of performance out of it and also better error testing i suppose so uh, one is const for constant and so here we're saying constant frame is equal to new frame uh, previously this was var frame so uh, const means it won't change the object. So it will always be this frame stored in that variable frame. Now the other one is a let. Now it, it becomes a little bit confusing. Let's um, pop on down here. We have a stage and this will be the only stage uh, object that's stored in our const stage. But we have a let of stage w and a let of stage h. Because if we do a resize, are we doing a resize in here? Yeah, here's a frame dot on resize. Note that we are putting a different width and a different height in there. If your object is just a number, you cannot, well, unless that number is going to stay constant. So in the past, this has been quite common. Const uh, speed equals 10. What that means is this speed will never change. It's going to be 10. Uh, we have constants of pi, const. Uh, it, we can't call it that anymore, 3.1416. That never changes. That's sort of how we've often thought of a constant. But uh, now we're doing something slightly different. Because watch this. If you have a const array yeah, is equal to this array right here, and we put 1, 2 in it, like that. And now we say array at 0 is equal to 5. We are not changing the array. The array is still this array object. That's an, uh, called an array literal, which means it's just a way of saying new array. Give me a new array. Here we said give me a new frame. 
that made an object. This is like saying, give me a new array. So when we say the variable uh, can't change or the constant can't change, we mean that it can't switch objects that is stored in it. It can actually mutate. So this is a mutation. It, it is like it's changing. Now the array is five and two, so it's changed, but that's considered a mutation. So as long as the object stays the same, we should use const like that, even if we're changing the stuff inside the object. Or if you had a rectangle, uh, here's a rectangle, for instance, it's const rectangle. And then later, afterwards, we say rect dot color is equal to blue. That's fine. It's still the same rectangle, it just has a different color. So the rectangle's changed, in a sense, because color's changed, but it is the same rectangle object. All right, is that clear? So we can use const in that case. And what that's telling uh, the computer is that I'm not gonna have to look out for anything different here. It's always gonna be this. And if you try and make a change, if I try and put uh, something else in there, for instance, if I assign this a different rectangle, or sorry, a different array, um, that would be array is equal to uh, seven, like that. This is now uh, another new array. It won't let me, so it will give me an error, like so. Refresh. And, oh, this is the live one, so we want to now go back to a local one to see our changes here. Open in browser. And F12. Oh, not F12. <laughs> Full screen, nothing. Woohoo! F11. There it is. Oh, uh, F12 was actually what I must say at the 11 by action accident. Invalid assignment const uh, to const array. So uh, 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 we cannot change that. Uh, likewise, if we try and put something else into rect, rect is equal to 7 or 8, like that. We can't do that either. Uh, let's close that. Bring it back here. Refresh. Invalid assignment to const rect. Okay, so what that's trying to tell us is that we'll always have the same thing in there, and that helps if we ever make a mistake and assign something else to it, it will be, oh, no, 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 we're, we weren't supposed to do that, and that can cause bugs later that we don't realize. All right, so, oh, here we were uh, building an array called start with A and B, that's fine. And the, this array will never change. It will be mutated. So there we are pushing the letter C into it. So it is now mutated. Uh, another thing we've got is a thing called a spread, which is handy. This takes the array elements of start and sticks them in here as in A, B, and C, because start had A, B, and C. So this is now A, comma, B, comma, C, D, E, F. And that's a const letters. Okay, spread comes up in a couple different places, and it's denoted by these three little dots here. Now, aside from const, we've also got let. Let is a way of saying the variable uh, is going to change objects. So it, it might have zero in it at one point, the zero object. It might have a seven in it at some other time. And the difference between let and var is that let is scoped to the squiggly brackets of, well, any squiggly brackets, I guess. So these, the four here. So for instance, inside here is the only place that this i is available. And here's let label. Because we're in a loop, we can't go const label. If we did const label the first time in the loop, it would be fine. But then after the second time, we would be putting a different label object in our constant of label. And we can't do that. Even though it's the same type, it's a different object. So we have to use let. And what that means is this label will only be available within the squiggly brackets of the for. It used to be that 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 variable, if we put a var there, we could access label afterwards, outside of that loop. Var is scoped to a function. So uh, the squiggly bracket here, any var declared inside of here would be available all always inside of this function. 
and that's not the uh, case with scope, or sorry, with um, with let. So let cannot be used outside of the squiggly brackets of the for. It also can't be used outside of the squiggly brackets of a conditional. So if something squiggly brackets and we put a let in there, nothing else outside of those brackets can access the let. One of the handy things about that is uh, we're making a label here. And what else are we doing? Uh, label dot on label cursor letters i stage dot update no no that's not it it was if it the oh it is getting a mouse down okay good so here is a label on mouse down I almost didn't recognize a function this is another new thing with uh, JavaScript six is the arrow function here so that's a short form for function like that it's the same thing. So any function literal or an anonymous function can be replaced with uh, just that. And there's a few there's a few other nifty things that 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 does. Uh, my cat is scratching at the back. Just a sec. Let me see if I can yell up. Hang on, one second. Oh, creak, creak, creak. Hey up there, could you let the cat in? Hello. What? I'm back. <laughs> My answer, I'm in bed. <laughs> cats. Um, got two cats, and there's a window right behind me. And if they want in, they scratch at the window, which can interrupt these recordings. Um, but hopefully you don't mind. We're in it for the long haul, aren't we? All right. So, um, right, on mouse down. We're calling this function. Now this function happens later. And in the past, it was always a bit of a pain in the neck because for instance, if we want to use letters at I, you know how in our loop we have our I, our I is going zero, one, two, three, or whatever through our letters. If we wanted to say letters at I, later on when the event happens, I would have already finished. It would have already hit the end. And then later on, we'd be using that last I. And so that was, that was we'd get bugs that way and it was a confusing bug and it was annoying and so forth. We'd have to use this thing called a closure instead, which we still can use. Um, but anyway, now we uh, don't have to worry about that because uh, the let I is scoped to these brackets, which means later on, this thing keeps that scope and, and that letter I is the original I. So no longer do we have that. And indeed the label is the original label as well, because that would normally happen if this were a var or these guys were vars. Um, the, the var label would be the last label made. So when we click on something, label would be the last label made. And that's why we'd always have to be careful to put in the event object here E, and then we would say E dot target. And, and that way we would know whichever one we click down on E would be the, the target and we could carry on. But we couldn't do that I unless we did this, uh, some fancy stuff. So now we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to do any fancy stuff. As a matter of fact, uh, it's a little bit different now. I think this is the traditional for loop. When you use a Zim for loop, this situation sort of irons itself out. It's automatically a closure. So anyway, that aside, we've now seen the const. So there's const for an object that doesn't change. Uh, can mutate, can change that way, but it can't change specifically, can't go to a different object. And we've seen the let the let can we should use let all the time the only time you can't really use let is you you have to assign something to let so i can't sit up here and say let a semicolon i can't declare it on its own and then sort of reuse it so if you ever have a situation where you need to declare a variable ahead of time you can't use let and you can't use const you would go back to a var and just beware uh, that we're using the traditional var at that point, which you can continue to use if you want. I mean, you don't have to use any of these things. Uh, that's one nice thing about it is you can pick and choose what parts you want to bring in 
in here into this world. If you're annoyed at this format and <laughs> you don't get it, take your time, get used to it. You don't have to use it. Um, some other things about this is if you only have one parameter, then you don't need the round brackets. So if you do have an event object that you're collecting to be able to find out the e.target or what have you, that would do just fine. This is saying, here's my one parameter that I'm going to send into this function body. And then we can use e inside of here. Most of the time, well, most of the time it looks like that, unless that you do have an event object, in which case that's kind of, oops, <laughs> that's kind of handy. Okay, so uh, carrying on, I think most of the rest of the stuff is just a review. There, there it is again, showing up in a click, another event here. Const sticks, because we're only going to keep that rectangle in there. Sticks dot on click. We've got uh, that happening. Let drunk equal a new drunk. Okay, I don't know what that is doing. Something tipsies. I think all that's good. Oh, here's a class. So there's now a class keyword, which is nice. This is class drunk and an extends keyword. Extends a rectangle. See how we're making a new drunk there? Here it is. That's a class. And how a class works in ES6 is you have a constructor. So there's the constructor. Ooh, this is new and nice. We're going to receive a width and a height. These are parameters. And in the past, we would say, uh, okay, let's collect the width here and let's collect the height there. That's all we could really do is collect the parameters. Then below we would say, if w is not equal to null, oh no, if w is equal to null, I don't usually do it this way, then w is equal to 10. And that would be a default. Uh, we built in Zim, we built this thing called zot. So if zot w w equals 10. Uh, that stands for uh, doing the knot. Because at the time when I first created Zim, uh, knots were a bit mysterious, how to handle that in all the different ways, because there seemed to be contention in all sorts of different ways of handling the knot. Then it ended up boiling down to just like, if it's equal to null, we'll, I think, do it. Or if it's not equal. Uh, yeah, I think that's the case. Anyway, but we've kept the zot, so that's how I usually do it. Anyway, we don't have to do that anymore. Cool, huh? So uh, what we do is we assign the equals 10 right in here and the equals 10, and these are our defaults. So if you don't have any defaults, then you um, can just keep, keep it that way. Uh, equals 10, like that. But this says that if there's a W, use the W. So if you pass in something, use the W. But if we don't, then make that 10. Cool, huh? All right, so we're still in our constructor then, and this is the this is the function in a sense that's going to first be run when we make a new rectangle. And the first thing that we do that we need to do when we're extending something in Zim is we have to call the super constructor. So now we have this is an access to the super class. We have a super keyword, yay! Which other object-oriented languages have already had class? already had extends uh, something like a constructor and a super class uh, or a super. So we could we could handle that without any problem really, although it's always been a little bit strange at times in JavaScript. Uh, but now we can do it with keywords that are made for it. There's one problem. <laughs> and the getter and setter are here, they're easier as well. So this is when you're using a method this method called tipsy, but you're going to use it as a property. So I'm just going to say um, my drunk dot tipsy equals true or equals an angle, I guess it is. That's what it's looking for. Um, so getter and setter methods have been simplified a little bit. Just uh, set tipsy. We receive something, and here's the function that we're going to do. Uh, get tipsy, we, uh, that's what would be run when we ask for what tipsy is, and that has to return something. It's going to return the angle. So great. One of the things, though, that this is missing is we don't have what's called private properties and private methods. And that is, uh, it's like unbelievable oversight. It's like, what? Are you kidding me? So they're going to do it in this upcoming version of 
of ECMAScript 6 or whatever, something 3. <laughs> it's like, arg. So we've got to wait for that to be implemented. I, I really can't believe that they didn't do that. Um, so in other words, I, as much, this is nice and it'll work for a number of things, but my guess, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have worked for three quarters of what's in, in Zim where I need private functions and, um, which you call private methods, I guess. So there we go. What else have we got? There's another let. Oh, there's a single, so we're, we're looping through the letters array, and each time we're get, given a letter, so that's a way that we can receive the single parameter, as mentioned. Super duper, oh, multi-line template. Yeah, that's nice. So uh, it's this back tick. So anytime you use a back tick, you can go across multiple lines. Not only that, you can insert variables right into that text, like so with the dollar sign, squiggly brackets, and then the variable name. It takes a little bit of getting used to it. It's not quite as nice as PHP's, but it's the same idea. So in PHP, you can take a string and insert dollar sign letter because all variables have to start with a dollar sign in PHP. Um, but here in JavaScript, they don't, which means we're sort of substituting it with this system here. I think that's probably better. I, would, I, I really wouldn't want to call all my variable names starting with a dollar sign. And for the amount of time that I'm going to be inserting a variable, I don't mind doing a little bit of extra work here rather than call my, my variable starting with a dollar sign. Agreed? Probably. So that turns JavaScript into a templating um, system, uh, which, is, which is great. That's very handy. Uh, there's some tricks that you can do with that stuff, too. All right. Where are we then? There's more, more, more more. Oh, uh, deconstruction. So what we're doing here is we're, we have a var. Now actually, I wonder if those should be vars. Yes. Uh, well, they could probably be lets, I think. Let's try it with the let. <laughs> Why don't we? That's probably old. Thing there. I mean, what, what we're doing is saying uh, assign stage w to w and assign stage h to uh, H. And if we don't put anything in here, or if this is null or something, then set it to 100. So that's a default value that we can use when we're deconstructing. So if we had one more thing in here, A, and we put one more thing in here called um, hello, then hello would go in A. Uh, if we have nothing here, I'm not sure, I don't think we can do that. If we say null there, it would be hello would go into A h would be 100, and stage width would go into w. Cool, huh? So deconstructing. And we've seen that. I think there's, oh, what is it, a list or something in PHP does that? can't remember if that's what it's called. Um, good. Well, we don't want those things. Cladunk, cladunk. And I think we've reached the end. We've reached the end. Woohoo! So hopefully that wasn't too scattered. This is ES6. I don't know if you can see that. ES6. We'll have that saved. It will be in the Explore folder of Zim, which is open source in a sense. If you just go zimjs.com slash explore, it shows you all of the files there. We've opened up that directory to anything that we've been exploring. And you should uh, come in and check that out here at... Uh, Zim Explore! <laughs> We're supposed to bring back this screen. Yes, there, there it is. Not only that, maybe fade that up. Fade that up would have been nice. The problem is I had it already. It was like all ready to go. And then uh, it uh, wasn't playing. So yeah, there we are. I mean, uh, who knows? It's, it's, this is all done, I'm sure, in post-production or budget. That's the budget. If you want to come and hang out with us, we're at zimjs.com slash slack, S-L-A-C-K. If you've made it this far, then hey, you're probably uh, maybe in, your, in the mood to, to come say hi. Ciao. I am Dr. Abstract.